Can you see my screen? Yes. Should I, um, looks like I should make this the main one. There you go. Cool. Okay. All right, then I'll get started. Um, all right, so thanks, Thomas, for organizing this, and welcome, everybody. Um, I want to talk about uh, AMR, my long-running project now for sort of unified foreign function interface for, for the Haxa language. Um, as far as who I am, I am currently a PhD student in Switzerland working on Rust verification, and I am a Haxa contributor, I guess, uh, somewhat long-term as well. Here's my Twitter, here's my website if you want to know more. Um, but what I want to talk about is, well, Haxa a little bit. So I guess if you are here, you probably like this language. Um, there are some nice features to it, you know, strongly typed type inference. It has ATTs, it has pattern matching like functional languages, it has powerful macros, which is kind of my favorite feature. But if you were pressed to sort of identify a unique selling point, it might be this. The fact that uh, Haxe can compile to you know, 11 different targets with the same code base. So you can run the same code on web, on desktop, on mobile, um, and integrate with uh, other programming languages. Which is great, but I guess there is one flow in this that I kind of want to solve with my project. So if you think about development in sort of major mainstream programming languages, say C++ or Python or whatever, and you're developing an application and suddenly you find yourself needing to implement whatever feature, say X here, the options you have are to you know, implement this feature manually so you have your application, and then you have your implementation of, of this feature. This way you, well, you accept the cost of maintaining this entire implementation as part of your application. It's not something you can share with other teams easily. It's not something you can open source easily. So it's not a great choice. Another alternative is to find a library which does what you want it to do. So hopefully you have just your application using a library which already existed in whatever language you're using, uh, in some you know library database that exists in that language's ex ecosystem. Okay, and then one more option yet for certain languages is to use a wrapper for a native library, where this native library already exists and is implemented in whatever C, for example, that compiles to, you know, DLLs or whatever shared object format. And then you just find a library in your language's ecosystem, which is a wrapper for this native library. So it's, you know, something that's still open source, but there's less maintenance costs for the community and sort of bridges your application with some native library. And now with these three choices in mind, let's, let's think about specifically what Haxe is like. So you can find libraries on, on Haxe lib, but it is a relatively small database of libraries. So you will find, you know, important implementations of, say, format library. Um, and that's fine. But let's face it, the community is relatively small, so it's not like you can find every kind of feature that you would want uh, on Haxalib. And the third choice is also not something that you can always do with Haxay, because you can write uh, some way to wrap a native library. For example, if you're targeting C++, you can write C++ externs which will compile your native library with your Haxe code and compile together into one binary. But of course, if you wanted to do the same thing, but for Hashlink, the, the process of actually writing this wrapper is entirely different. And not to mention that for all of Haxe's system targets, 
we basically have only known how to write wrappers for for these two targets, for C++ and for Hashlink. And for the others, not so much. And so the situation, if you want to keep this unique selling point of, of Hackse, of, of targeting all these different platforms, looks like this. If you want to bridge Hackse code to some native library, well, the wrapper has to now have, you know, however many targets you, you want to target as part of, of, of this of this wrapper. So there's different versions of externs, different versions of, of the glue code that needs to compile for the bridge to even exist. So the fact is that all system targets of Hackse have some FFI, some foreign function interface mechanism, but every single one of those is a bit different. And so the entire point of Ammer is to alleviate the situation by making the, the author of this wrapper library write the definitions just once. You write basically what are externs, what I call Ammer definitions, and the library, Ammer, takes care of actually generating different kinds of glue code, different versions of the glue code for C++, for Hashling, for Java, JVM, and so on. And well, that, that's one to, to unify. Uh, one goal is to unify the, the definitions and hopefully to also make the definitions somewhat uh, intuitive and, you know, hexa like So here's a very basic example of what this kind of thing looks like. A, 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 dem a definition in Ammer of, of a library is really just a class which, you know, extends some marker type and its methods, which you give the sort of native name corresponding to, are just you know function declarations in this class. And here, the second part is also an example of defining a a wrapper for a struct that also exists in the native code. And you can add to it you know more functions and so on. And when you you know ask Ammer to actually compile this, it will spit out for now some commands which it actually takes, which are the compiler invocations that you would need to do, you need to figure out if you wanted to do this yourself. And so as far as what it can do is, well, of course, you can have primitive, primitive types, you know, your integers, your floats, whatever. You can have pointers to opaque types, you can have pointers to structs with, you know, some fields. You can store Hackse values, which is trickier than it might seem because, of course, any Hackse target is garbage collected, but native libraries aren't generally. So you actually need to sort of maintain some kind of reference count for this to work. And you can do a specific kind of Hackse value, which is a closure, and then you know make the native code call back into Hackse code using uh, this feature. Um, and more recently, I've also implemented vectors and then sort of packed ve vectors and byte buffers, which are shared directly with the native code. So there is no copying over of your byte buffer; it reuses the exact same byte buffer. And I wrote where possible because not all platforms actually can support this. And some features that I'm still looking to implement are, for example, entry points. So if you think back to this diagram of, of Hackse code calling into a native function, well, if you reverse it, it can be that you have some larger application such as a I don't know, a digital audio workstation, which has, you know, a plugin feature. And you might want this, such a plugin to be written in Hackse. And for this, you would need basically a way for the application to call into your Hackse code. So it's kind of similar to a callback, but maybe a slightly more general definition of it. I call it an entry point. So this is where we enter into Hackse code, potentially start you know, the hashlink runtime potentially starts garbage collector where it's relevant for C++ and so on. And another feature that would make a lot of this much 
nicer to use for, for Haxa users is some kind of way to actually generate definitions of, of AMR libraries somewhat automatically. So I've been uh, told by Blue Black or whatever the name is on GitHub about this project called Squig, uh, which is kind of similar. You write one um, interface of a library and it is meant to generate this interface in any language it targets. And I think if we find such sweet definitions of existing libraries, it would be nice if Ammer was one of those sort of targets of SWIG. That way you could reuse that SWIG definition directly into, uh, into Hexa. Another approach would be to use Clang, the, the C compiler, not as a compiler, but more as a library of its own, where it would parse uh, header files and figure out what the actual function signatures are in a given you know, library header file and extract from those, again, an, an, another Hammer definition. And finally, somewhat more precarious maybe is to try to actually read debug infos from the library objects directly because they also can contain the signatures and therefore you might be able to extract the signature you need in your Hammer definition. Let me talk also about some, well, let's let's say, use cases. What I imagine for for, for Amr libraries in the future. So the very first category I have here is libraries which are already implemented in Axe. So maybe not so interesting, but things like, you know, Zlib and, and and PNG and the various formats libraries that we have. They we have a Axe implementation, so this is not so interesting. Maybe apart from, you know, improving performance. A slightly more interesting category, I guess, is libraries which could, in theory, be implemented in the Hexa, although it might take a long time or it might be, you know, generally inadvisable. So this is things like SDL2, which, you know, starts to be large enough that maintaining it would be very difficult if you just did it in Hexa. Things like OpenSSL, which you know has tricky cryptographic code in it. It's you know hundreds of thousands of lines of, of, of C code. Yes, you could implement this in Hexa, but you probably don't want to. And of course, there is also another category, which is libraries which simply cannot be implemented in Hexa, even if you wanted to. And the examples I have here is things like the, the Steam APIs. It's not that I guess you could implement Steam and Hexa, but the problem is the the code base is closed source. So all you see is the APIs that Steam wants you to use. And so you really need to connect the code, your game, to these APIs via some, some wrapper. And similarly, native OS frameworks, like you know, doing actual windowing stuff on, on Windows, on Mac OS, whatever, without a third party library in between. Again, this is a closed source scenario. You really should just use the APIs that are provided. Um, one somewhat last thing I want to talk about is um, the internals of AMR. So in the last, let's say half a year, I've been working on a quite dramatic rewrite of AMR from the ground up. And so the picture that I've shown you here is slightly inaccurate. What actually goes on is there is one extra layer of indirection where there are now two libraries, Ammer and Ammer Core, where Ammer Core is really responsible for just pasting a, a fragment of C code into something that can then be linked to by a Hexa target. And Ammer is just a user of this uh, macro library, which chooses a particular kind of C code to put into the, the definitions. So in particular, Ammer generally assumes that you want to be using a native library and that you want to declare existing functions, whereas Ammer core might in theory be used on its own where you just want to write, you know, very critical performance, critical code directly in C and somehow use it from Hexa. 
So as far as the status uh, of, of this project, the this old version of Ammer is of course still available online on, on GitHub and it supported C++ or supports C++ Hashling and Lua. At some point it supported Aval, but kind of dropped that for now. And the new one, which you know will be released very soon, but actually soon because I'm just working out kinks with the CI, supports many more Haxay platforms, as in most of the system platforms that you have on Haxay, uh, which the list you can see here. I guess the most interesting ones, he most interesting additions here are Java for doing this on you know mobile without going through C++, and Node.js as well for. Well, hopefully another rather performant target, which can use native code. Also something I'm planning is um, somehow dealing with Wasm, where you can call from, from just JavaScript, which Haxay will compile into WebAssembly compiled C code. That way you could use native libraries even on, on the web. And yeah, so I would really like to know sort of what you would like to use this for if it if it sounds interesting i would really like to support developments of such use cases so please get in touch um, i can tell you in in the past hammer has been used to, uh, to 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 wrap the epic online store uh, apis in a in a game that should be launched i think now although it's not something i can publish because of um, agreements with with the EOS APIs. Um, so yeah, that's that's it. And I would welcome any questions either now or you know at any point in Discord. Yeah, I'm just looking to see right now if anyone's asking any questions. Um, I, I'm definitely interested in using uh, using it myself, uh, even though I put a lot of work into making. Um, some externs for HXCPP, I would uh, gladly rewrite it to use Ammer rather than have to like manually make uh, make bindings for all those other things. Um, and if there's anything, any features Ammer needs to support it, I'd be interested in, um, in uh, helping with that. Because um, that would definitely help with, uh, with uh, grig.audio and you know, the audio stuff that I've worked on, those that, that's all like native bindings. Okay, so let's see. Um, people are just kind of chatting about hacks generally. I don't see any like uh, any questions. Anyone have any questions? Um, people are allowed to raise their hand in the audio or they can, um, oh no, that's fine. You, you can totally talk off, off topic, but. <laughs> Uh, if anyone has any questions about this, uh, about Ammer, um, feel free to ask. Yeah, if it's about hacks, it's not. It's not. Um, it's not off topic. If it's about hacks, I, I, I used to be told it was pronounced hex, and for the longest time I pronounced it that way. Then I, I heard enough hacks people pronounce it hacks that I went back to saying hacks. I think that's just the French heritage for it to be X. Yeah. And I do pronounce it hexay because I want to differentiate it from the word hex, H A C K S. I mean, it's, oh, it's a yeah. kind of slow version of this word, but uh, <laughs> it stuck with me. Yeah, someone even said it really sounds like saying hacks, H A C K S. Um, okay, well, Ammer support inline C on all supported targets. Oh, okay, we answered it there. Yeah, I should not answer that directly in the chat, but yes, if, yes, it will. Um, the, the way it works is Ammer Core, the, 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 the thing that actually deals with C code, is used for every single target of Ammer. So there is not it, it sort of cannot be any other way than supporting C on all targets. Would um, 
in theory, in theory, would it be possible? Because, uh, like you mentioned, like proprietary stuff, would it be possible to basically bind to anything? Like, if they if they wrote some native stuff in, like, say, Rust or or some other programming language, um, as long as there's a way to access that from C, would it be possible to use that through from Ember? Yeah. So as long as it's from accessible via C, it's fine because either you know you use this Ember core to just directly use the calls that you would in C code, or there's maybe a nicer interface for it in Ember. But yeah. actually, now that you mentioned Rust, it's also a let's call it a stretch goal because of course it's a lot of work. I I I think it would be nice if Ember core supported not only compiling C code but also for example, Objective C, which you need to bind to, you know, native uh, uh, Mac uh, yeah. libraries, and among these could, in theory, be Rust. I just don't see as much of a need to do this with Rust yet. As long as what, yeah. as long as this this language, whatever it is, can be compiled with, you know, make style instructions into a, a binary object, then it should be fine. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, I, I think when we do at the end, we'll all have like a vote on how to pronounce hacks. <laughs> so apparently that's a hot topic now. We could all just sort of like everyone join the Google Meet and just say how they pronounce hacks at the end of this <laughs> event. It'd be fun to see how everyone pronounces it. Okay, does anyone else have any questions? Um, okay, uh, okay, in uh, on Twitch, uh, uh, no D zero is asking, how do you handle C++ versus C style object conventions? Can my C style library be automatically converted into an object style for hacks? Like struct, um, uh, curly brace, void, um, underscore a, I'll, I'll, I'll copy and paste that so you can see it if you're not looking at the. Um, I'm looking at the hacks a hybrid chat on Discord. Okay, I'll, I'll copy it over there. I guess I could have used my uh, matter bridge to bridge all three of these together. <laughs> that would have made things easier. Mm -hmm. Right, so this is a uh, relatively simple feature that does exist in Ammer where you can declare one of the arguments to a native function to be of this type with a capital D, T. Um, so, so that argument is something that is skipped when you actually write the method call in Hacksay and is implicitly filled with the current instance of the struct. So it looks like you are calling the method on the struct object, but under the hood, of course, is just filling in the pointer with the correct value. Um, but of course, there's there's more to C++ than just you know omitting the this pointer, and that's yeah. that's like generics and stuff. There are some preliminary versions of this in the Ammer CI, but as I said, I I think ultimately Ammer Core should be able to compile not only just into C glue code but also C++ glue code to support any uh, C++ feature in the end. Oh, and someone asks, "What does Ammer do?" Uh, some people, some probably they're not they're probably not just being for themselves because I'm sure other people also join late. Um, but they're just asking, "What what does uh, Ammer do?" <laughs> uh, I don't want to skip the the, the previous question about Cgo. Um, oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very quickly, Sorry. I have not looked into it, um, <laughs> so there's an answer to that. Yeah, I, I will have a look, but uh, I'm not sure what it is yet. Uh, can Ammer tie together Google Meet, Discord, and Twitch? Of course. Um, <laughs> it sounds like they were talking about like the prospect. I think people always get excited by the thought of like um, kind of routing around uh, Hax's um, uh, target, the target part of the compilation, and just kind of straight make your own code. Make code. Maybe maybe they're talking about like using Ammer to generate Go code directly. Um, not sure if that's what they meant, but. Ah, 
yeah, maybe. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not yet sure what exactly Emmer would do in the yeah. situation, but yeah. it, it might be something that he can do in the... Um, yeah, sure, PX Shadow, message me about it. Um, Morkel, Morkel, how is C, C++ buffers handled in a safe manner? So, in terms of overflows, you can sort of just say, well, set, you know, index 10 in a eight element buffer. And of course it will overflow and it will cause probably some unexpected behavior. Um, so, so by default, there's no handling. I, I, what is in the old version of Ammer and what I still want in the new version of Ammer is more of a safe abstraction, I guess is what you would want, where rather than just having a pointer to you know, int or whatever your buffer element is, you have something that's a type which declares both the, the, the element type and the size. So it's something like array fixed of integers of size eight. And and then if the if this information is sort of known in the type system, then Ammer can generate maybe optionally the overflow checks that would catch the situation for you. Cool. So yeah, thumbs up. Looks there's one more question about HL uh, hashlink native arrays. <laughs> yeah, so if I remember correctly, hashlink native arrays are the, the backing um, type underneath vectors right now, or un underneath primitive type vectors rather in hashlink. So that is what is used for um, shared uh, arrays, because it's in, in hashlink a native array is essentially just a pointer into data. So you can use that for sharing that with the native code. Do I differentiate them from normal arrays? Yes, if you mean the, the Haxe array type, because the Haxe array type is actually a um, dynamic array. So it does reallocate the native array uh, when needed. So yes, those are two very different types as far as Amr is concerned. Um, do I have an ETA of this progress of Amr? I think it will be hopefully this this week. I mean, I'm of course juggling this work with you know a full time job, but uh, that that's kind of this, the the level of progress that I'm at. I do have all those targets that I listed in the in the slides compiling for various tests for, for Amercore, and I am sort of making it work with the new version of Ammer as well. Cool. I have one question. Was there or are there any um, were there any limitations with like how the hacks compiler works or just with the hacks language that um, that have kind of prevented you from doing some of the things that you want to do with Ammer or made things more difficult? Mm. E yeah, there are some things which in the end will reflect on the, the definitions you will have to write being a little bit uglier than they have to be, for example. And yeah. like these are things that well, they're kind of technical things. For example, if you if you've seen the the, the the struct definition that I had on the slides, it said something like you know exa class example struct extends Ammer def struct, then the string which was the native name of the, the struct, and then the second type parameter was the name of the main library class, and so the way this works is you sort of have to create a kind of hierarchy of types of the native types that you're going to compile, right? You have the, the main library, you have various subtypes such as the structs or different ways to separate the, the API of the library. And so one of the sort of interesting things that have to happen inside Ammer is break cycles in generating types in, in that mm we have to start the generation of the library type before we can add to it the methods that come from the struct. 
but we have to add all the mess from all the structs that we, we will possibly find. And we must finish generating that type before we get back to generating the struct types. It's, it's quite tricky, and I don't know if it's entirely according to you know, any kind of specification that the compiler will ever adhere to. Um, but yeah, there are some interesting things that happened. And another feature that I would like is an, a sort of nicer way of um, juggling between the typed and untyped AST. Um, because, you know, there is this interface in the compiler which just says, given an expert, an untyped expression, give me its typed version, which is nice, but it just doesn't really deal with field accesses or things that actually happen in, in the kind of expressions you might want to process. So, you know, some, some of the macro APIs could probably be improved. Okay, cool. Oh, someone is typing something. <laughs> well, let's see if that's a question. Will I consider adding Amr to Hacksalib? Um, maybe. The, the <laughs> way I see it is Amr and Amr Core are both kind of middleware, as in it's a, it's a library that is intended to be used by library authors. And as yeah. such, I'm not sure it does much to have this on Hacksalib as opposed to on GitHub. I think what should be added to Hacksalibs, if anything, is concrete uh, definitions of concrete libraries using Ammer. Um, and also one of the features that existed in old Ammer and probably will be resurrected because it's relatively simple is a way to sort of just spit out all the processed Hacksay code after the AMR definitions were processed, such that the AMR definition for a native library no longer has AMR as a dependency. This means mm -hmm. that you don't have to pay the cost of the macro processing time. It means that AMR does not need to exist as a dependency in your source tree. It means that you sort of lock the version of whatever code AMR generated at the time that you used it. Um, just a question. If, <laughs> may, if I'm using Amr, maybe you sh can structure it as an app? Because if you if you plan to make it like, um, so you wouldn't have it as a dependency, and you, it spits out uh, external definitions, maybe you can have it as an app, which like, give me some library, and I'll give you the hacks external equivalent and do this and that, include it in your code, and you have the external definition. Mm -hmm. I, I see the point. I think the, the actual development process while you're developing an AMR definition it is still more of a library, like you interact with hacks code and you know have to change definitions and so on. I think such a sort of app style workflow is something that could work on top of Ammer, where you, again, if we had such such interaction with Clang as a library, it might be that somebody could develop some kind of UI into which you drop you know, header files, and it shows you roughly what it's going to generate. And then you take the process from there on. But I don't think even with such automatic definition generators, I don't think the process will be fully automatic. So there will still be some some code tweaking, code editing that you will have to do, I think, no matter what. Just because it, you know, uh, it's not the same as whatever you want in Hexay. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, um, uh, does, does Ammer, uh does Ammer come with any like uh, command line tools, or is it is it basically you just um, use it as a lib while you're making your lib? Uh, I'm I'm sorry, I'm not sure I understand the question. Oh, like uh, is is any part of Ammer just like kind of like a command line tool basically that you would run on your code, or is it um, 
or does using it just basically mean that you're consuming another library while making your library? Mm -hmm. um, for now, it's it's more of a library, as in in the you know X, HXML file you say dashly bummer or whatever. However, it has a lot of its own configuration, which for now is extra, you know, compile time defines that you can pass also through HXML. Although most of these also have a variant where you pass it as metadata to the to the class representing the library. So, so there is no command line tool per se yet, but there might be in the future. Someone's uh, someone's asking. Um, uh, Morka Morkulov uh, is asking, like, uh, where else would you find stuff that's hacks? Basically, asking where would you find stuff that's hacks, but not like in hacks libs. I think a lot of people are in the habit of looking if looking in hacks lib to see if um, uh, if something exists, and then if it's not there, they might think it doesn't exist. Um, my answer is GitHub, but uh, if you had any other answer for that. Yeah, I, I see the point. I, I guess what I would say is something like the community channels, like community.hacks.org for the various showcases. But yeah, I mean, I might still add Ammer to Hacks, I, I don't know, but yeah, I, I think we could do just generally better with with sort of channels of discovery and, and this sort of resource stuff. Okay, cool. Um, uh, so yeah, if people don't have any more questions, um, I could start my thing. Uh, I don't mind if my thing's cut into if people still have questions, but um, <laughs> I, I think people can spend all day uh, trying to convince you to add it to hack to <laughs> hackslib. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not so, adamant on that, and uh, you know I'll keep answering questions on the chat. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. About the um, hacks good thing, uh, I thought I'd just add, even though I'm I will I'm going to speak about that when I do my thing. Uh, I'm collecting like even libraries that are not on hackslib. So if a library is not on hackslib, then you should still be able to find it that way. I'll speak about mm -hmm. it when yeah when I when I go to speak myself. <laughs> 